All right, in number one, it says match each polynomial with its end behavior. Some end behavior options may not have a matching polynomial. So on these ones, it's a lot of words to read through. So one of the things that I kind of like to do is draw a picture on either side because end behavior is either going up or it's going down. So it's either going up to a really big number, okay, or it's getting bigger and bigger in the negative direction. And that's on either side. So I kind of like to think of drawing an axis here. And then I'm going to draw, is it going up as the X's are getting bigger? Is it going down? And when the X's are getting smaller, is it going up or is it going down? Um, so that I don't have to keep rereading all of the words. So in this one, it says as X gets larger and larger in either direction. So this means on both sides. So when we're talking about this X and Y axis, so here's the X. So these are the X's that are getting big, and these are the X's that are getting big in the negative direction. So this is saying on either side, positive or negative, the function is getting larger and larger in the positive direction. So on this side, the, the function is going up, and on this side, the function is going up. In number two, it says as X gets larger and larger in just the positive direction, so over here, so as the X's are going to the right, um, f of x is getting larger and larger in the positive direction as well, okay? So the function is going up on the right. And as x gets larger and larger in the negative direction, meaning the left side, the function is getting larger and larger in the negative direction. So that means the function is going down. Number three, as x gets larger and larger in the positive direction, so again, the right side of the graph, f of x or the function is getting larger and larger in the negative direction. So the function is going down on the right side. And as x gets larger and larger in the negative direction, okay, so on the left, f of x gets larger and larger in the positive direction. So on the left side of the graph, um, the graph is going up. Number four, as X gets larger and larger in either the positive or the negative direction. So this means on the left side and the right side, the function is getting larger and larger in the negative direction. So the function is going down on both sides, okay? Um, and so now we just need to match these functions to it. So look for the leading coefficient, okay, or the leading term actually. So here's the leading term. And so we see that this term has an even degree, and I should probably circle it so we can see the positive or negative. So this has an even degree, meaning the ends are gonna do the same thing. They're either both going up or they're both going down, and it has a positive leading coefficient. So this means that both ends are gonna be going up. So that matches number one, okay? So this one matches number one, both ends are going up. Um, B, our leading term is this plus x squared. So again, this one is an even degree at two, okay? And then it has a positive leading coefficient. So both ends are gonna be doing the same thing and they're both gonna be going up. That's number one again. C, our leading term is the positive one x to the fourth. Okay, so again, this is an even degree with a positive leading coefficient. So both ends are going to be going up, same as number one. And then D gives us a lead term of 2x. So this one has a degree of one. Okay, so the ends are going to be doing different things. And then it's a positive leading coefficient. This means down on the left. Okay, up on the right. So down on the left, up on the right is number two. Number two, which polynomial function gets larger and larger in the negative direction? Okay, so which function gets larger and larger in the negative direction as X gets larger and larger in the negative direction? So when we're talking about this, Okay, this says when the X's are getting large in the negative direction, so that means the left side of the graph. Okay, so X is larger and larger, negative is on the left. The graph is gonna be 
getting larger and larger in the negative direction, that means down. So that means this one's end is going to be something like this. So on part A, we see an even degree with a positive lead coefficient. So this means both ends are going to be up. Okay, um, B gives us our lead term of 6x to the third. So this has an odd degree, meaning the ends are doing opposite things, one up, one down, and a positive co lead coefficient. So when x's are negative, y's are negative. When x's are positive, y's are positive. So this one is going down on the left. And then we can see um, this one's even with a positive, so these ones are both going up again, and this one is an even degree with a positive, so these ones are both going up again. So B would be the answer there. Number three, the graph of the polynomial function F is shown which statement about the polynomial is true. So the degree of the polynomial is even. Well, we see both ends are going up. That means even. Okay, so then this would be true. So let's make sure on the others, just to make sure nothing else seems like it would be true. The degree of the polynomial is odd. That's not true because then the ends have to be doing the opposite. The constant term of the polynomial is even. So the constant is where it crosses the y-axis, and we see that right here, and it's a decimal. So it's definitely not an even number. It looks like it's like 3.5 maybe. The constant term of the polynomial is odd. Again, no, because it's a decimal. Number four, Andre wants to make an open top box by cutting the corners out of a 22 inch by 28 inch um, piece of poster board. Um, and then folding its sides up. The volume in cubic inches of the open top box is a function of a single side length x of the square cutouts. Okay, so we've got, whoops, we've got this um, rectangular box here, and then we're going to cut out these little square cutouts from each corner. And then let me actually fill this in as well. So we're going to cut these out, okay, of each side. And each of these boxes has a length of X. And then we want to come up with the volume of the open top box that would be created by folding the box up on these little folds here. So these are X, like we said, um, all around the side. And this part the shorter part started at 22 so then this part right here is going to be 22 minus 2x for this length and then if we took a look at this length okay the longer side of the box was 28 inches and then we'd subtract off two x's for the cutout so that's going to be 28 minus 2x and then we know that our height is going to be the same as um, the cutout, so x. So when we write the volume formula, okay, we're going to be doing the um, multiplying all three dimensions. So the length, 28 minus 2x, times the width, um, 22 minus 2x, and then times the height of the box, which is the length of those cutouts at x. Then it wants us to know what would the volume be if we plugged 6 in. Okay, so if our cutout was 6, so we're going to be doing V of 6. So we're going to be doing 28 minus 2 times 6, so minus 12. And then 22 minus 2 times 6 again, so minus 12. And then multiplying by 6. So 28 minus 12 is 16. And then 22 minus 12 is 10, and then times 6. So if we multiply this all together, we get a volume of 960. And then inches cubed for volume. And then part C asks us, what would a reasonable volume be? And so now you can't cut more than halfway down the shortest side. 
because then you wouldn't have enough left to cut back from the other corner. So we have to cut more than zero inches and then we have to cut less than 11. So less than half of that shorter side. Number five, for each polynomial function, rewrite it in standard form, then state the degree and the constant term. So we see that we've got um, three binomials. Okay, so let's go ahead and multiply. Um, I'm gonna do distributive property to multiply these two together. Okay, so I'm gonna do, let me just write it out over here. So I'm gonna multiply these ones together first. And so I'm gonna do 3x times x, which is 3x squared. Then I'm gonna do 3x times two, which is 6x. And I'm gonna wait, because I'm gonna add that to this one when I distribute the one, because it's gonna give me a like term. So 3x times two is 6x, one times x is 1x, 6x and 1x gives me 7x. And then we've got two times one, which is two. So here's that new um, trinomial for multiplying these two together. Now we need to multiply the binomial. So I'm gonna do this by multiplying in the box. So I'm gonna draw a three by two box. And I kind of already have my polynomial up there. So this 3x squared, 7x, and 2. And then I'm going to put the x minus 3 on this side. So now we'll be able to multiply these together to get our new um, polynomial. So x times 3x squared is 3x cubed. x times 7x is 7x squared. And x times 2 is 2x. 3x squared times negative 3 is negative 9x squared. Negative 3 times 7x is negative 21x. And then negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. So now we can um, combine our like terms when we take these out. So I've got these x squareds are like terms. And then these x's right here are like terms. So when I write out what f of x is, f of x is going to be 3x cubed, then negative 9x squared and 7x squared is negative 2x squared. Negative 21x and positive 2x is negative 19x, and then we have that negative 6. So there's our f of x polynomial written in standard form. Now this next one, g of x, we hopefully see is really just f of x in there because we already multiplied this out. Okay, so the g of x polynomial is actually just negative two times the f of x polynomial. So we're just doing negative two times f of x. And so we can just write down the f of x polynomial here. So we don't have to re-multiply everything because we already did it right here. So this is just negative two times three x cubed minus two x squared minus 19 x minus six. And that will give us our g of x polynomial. So we'll just distribute that negative two in. So we get negative six x cubed, positive four x squared, positive 38 x, and then positive 12 for our g of x function. Number six, Kieran wrote f of x equals x minus three times x minus seven as an example of a functions, function whose graphs has x-intercepts at negative three and seven. What was his mistake? Um, remember that the zeros and the factors are opposite of each other, not the same. So when we see this negative three in the factor, the zero is positive three. Negative seven would be positive seven. And the reason that is, is because anytime we take and multiply two numbers together and they equal zero, which is what the x-intercept means, is that the function itself is equal to zero on that x-axis, Okay, then that means that one of those factors equal to zero. So then we would be, what we're doing is solving this, x minus three equals to zero. So we add the opposite to both sides to get the zero of positive three. Okay, 
or x minus 7 equals 0, then we add the opposite of negative 7 to both sides to get the 0 of x equals 7. So they're always going to be opposites of each other, not the same. Number 7, a polynomial function f of x has x-intercepts at negative 6, 0, and 2, 0. What's one possible factor of f of x? So you just have to give one. Okay, you don't have to give both. Um, but these are both x-intercepts, so this gives us x equals negative 6. So if we bring that negative 6 back over, we get the opposite of negative 6, okay, which is plus 6. So we have x plus 6 equals 0, so here's one factor. So x plus 6 is a possible factor. You also could use this one um, to get x minus 2 as another factor, because remember this would be x equals 2. So if I bring it back over with the x, this would be the other factor, x minus 2.